ladies, we know when we hit midlife, we start gaining weight in all different areas, the arms, the legs, and of course for me, most of all, in the hardest part and the most frustrating part has been the belly fat. That's what we're gonna talk about today. How to fight it, how to get rid of it, what to do so it doesn't make you crazy. I got a lot of questions from you on TikTok about what diet I follow and what I do to fight body fat in menopause. So let's go ahead and get started. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and also the notification so you can find out every time I post a new video about aging well over 50. I've posted a lot about menopause and my menopause journey here on this channel. So if this is your first time here, welcome. I'm so glad you could be here. Be sure and leave a comment below. Love that you're part of this community. But the reason that we're talking about this in particular is because this is an intersection, a time that we all are gonna go through. We're going through midlife, menopause, and then I think meaning, what life is all about. In today's video though, I really wanna focus on your body and menopause because I think it plays a lot into all of our psyches. I spent a long time working out, eating right, being able to cheat though on the weekends, being able to have a drink or two and it not affecting my body at all. And now what I've realized over the course of the past few years is it's not so easy anymore. First, I want to talk about why that happens during this time in perimenopause and then in menopause and of course, postmenopausal women as well. But I also want to talk about what you can do so it's a little bit easier. I'm with you. First of all, it is so frustrating to try to do everything right. You're eating right. You're working out. You're doing all the things that you used to do maybe when you were a little bit younger and none of it seems to be working or it's actually getting a lot worse. And then add to that an even more difficult time of hot flashes, not being able to sleep, night sweats, just feeling terrible across the board. And you just sort of feel like you want to give up. And that's where I was. So I want to talk about that because belly fat, first of all, I had to really understand what it was. I had never dealt with it before. And when it started coming on, it came on faster and furious. I felt like it was literally the next day. And I started fitting differently in my clothes. Things just felt really tight. I was going up a size or going up another size. So here's what I do know. First of all, majority of the time, this is caused by the fact that our hormones have changed. Our bodies are no longer making estrogen, which is why people use different supplements or choose to go on hormones. Second, our metabolism that used to let us stay up late, eat late at night, drink whatever we want, has certainly slowed down. So those are the two things that we are going to try to tackle in this. And I'd like to do it through food, also exercise. And also the third thing is just a few life habits that I've tried to change to make it a little bit easier and not feel like it's so impossible. Okay. Five things that I'm doing in the kitchen to combat body fat. First of all, we're talking about fresh and frozen versus processed and packaged. And I know you've probably heard it before. Most of the time you should shop at the perimeter of the grocery store, meaning you're hitting things like the produce area. You're going into the meat and fish, poultry, seafood, section. I have found over time, and I'm not cooking every single day because I work and because sometimes I have to eat out. But what I am finding is when I do cook, I try to make sure I cook in bulk and I try to do some meal prep for myself. So it's a little bit easier. So I think if you can find a couple of easy recipes to follow, to make the food attractive to you and make it a little bit fun, that's the best way to go. That's what I found is working for me, especially when it comes to being very limited on time. There are also three books that I've been following that have really helped me out during this time. So the first book, is Get Off Your Sugar. And this is written by the same author that wrote Get Off Your Acid, Dr. Gerald Joffrey. I just, I swear by his technique. He really talks about a lot of things that are important. He talks about inflammation, fighting it. He talks about being aware of sugars and where they are in every bit of the food we eat. He does a lot of the greens that I have talked about in the past before. And I put those in my smoothie every morning. The second book I like is Eat, Taste, Heal. That is a book that I found a lot of great, easy recipes in. The other one, is Love Real Food. And this book is a gorgeous book, by the way. I love the pictures, but I've made so many of the recipes. The second thing I do with regard to eating is intermittent fasting. This helps me out in a couple of ways. I'm a person that has to feel very, very organized. So I know what I'm going to do every single day. What I really do is focus on the 16, eight. So that's 16, not eating eight hours is where I eat my food. So most of the time, what I do is I do it between noon and eight o'clock at night. So the method does a few things. First, it allows your cells to repair and allows your body to remove waste, which is what you need to do to lose weight. It helps me not only lose weight, but also lose fat at the same time, which is so, so, so important. And it's also documented that doing intermittent fasting like this, 
this can help reduce your risk of type 2 diabetes. So I've put all of the different things that I eat throughout the course of the day, whether it's a powder that I'm going to put in my smoothie, whether it's nuts that I'm going to snack on, whether it's raisins because sometimes I need a little bit of sweet. I make sure that I have those all in a very organized fashion behind me. And number three, when it comes to smoothies, I do that in my eight hour window. So that's the first thing that I'm going to eat in the course of a day. And I make sure that has protein in it. I make sure it has any of the supplements in it that I want to use to help me out with menopause symptoms. For example, I'll put a couple of drops of a vitamin D in there. But the goal of this is not only to keep me feeling full, but also to keep me energized. So in one setting, I'm doing as many things as I can. And then finally, let's talk about protein because that is really, really important. And it's a hard one for me. I don't eat meat. I have started to incorporate fish back into my diet, but I find protein in a number of different sources. And what I try to make sure is that I don't have too much protein because sometimes I find it gives me a stomach ache, but I don't have too little. So then I'm looking for all sorts of carbs to eat to essentially fill me up. But let's talk about a few of the proteins that I'm focused on right now. The first one is salmon. The next thing I always look for, walnuts. I try to eat walnuts more than I eat any other kind of nut. I love avocados. I love lentils. I love chickpeas. I like tofu, quinoa, eggs, almond butter and almonds, all of those I just really like to put into my diet and have as many of those as I can a week. Okay, finally, and this is a big one for me and it's the most simple one and it should be the easiest, but water is so important, especially right now, because we're trying so hard to flush the toxins out of our body as much as possible. We're fighting hot flashes, we're fighting night sweats. So I try to do everything I can to get as much water as possible. I don't love drinking water, full disclosure. I find it completely boring. I try to add lemon or lime or fruits to it, but sometimes it's just as difficult. So I try and make sure that I get that from different meals too. So when I talk about the meal that I have every day to start off the day, the smoothie, that is a liquid smoothie. I add water, I add ice, there's liquid in that. So I'm at least getting hydrated. When you're dehydrated, so many things happen, not only on the inside of your body, but also the outside of your body. And you start to see that in your skin and you start to see that obviously in how you feel. So if you can incorporate as much water and or liquid as you can in a given day, I think that that is a huge plus with regard to removing waste, helping your body be more regular. In midlife, what more perfect time to be talking about how we wanna live the next 30, 40, 50 years, right? And when you can get into these habits right now, it's just so much easier and so much less stressful. And it gives me more confidence in myself when I, when I eat right. Okay, exercise for belly fat. I definitely have had to change my workout. There's no question about it. But I feel like right now, if I can do weight training three times a week, that helps out my body. I feel like it helps elongate my muscles. I feel like it just changes the way I feel about myself mentally. If you can do that, and I don't care if you're doing it in the middle of your living room, everything makes a difference right now. The second thing I've incorporated in my workout, and I started this back when I was going through my divorce in 2012 in a big way, is yoga. Yoga has helped me not only mentally, but physically. It's helped me have that moment to just I don't know, be with myself, to think, to stretch out my body, to move it in different ways. But I just think those type of workouts are really important as we get older because those are workouts we can continue to do in 10, in 20, in 30 years. That's really important to me. The other thing I started to do, especially during the pandemic, was walk every day. I don't care if you're walking slow. I don't care if you're walking fast. I don't care if you're walking on a treadmill. I don't care if you're walking in place in your living room. I think it's important to just keep your body moving. So those are my tips. I think those have really helped me with regard to belly fat and losing belly fat and also keeping it off and it not being such a struggle all the time. I also want to say something else before I go, please don't get discouraged and please don't give up there. These things take time. They just take a little bit of time, but give yourself that attention. Give yourself that self care. Give yourself a little bit of extra love. And I promise you, you will be rewarded 
10 times what you're putting into it all. Download my free Unlock Your Bold Guide. It has five steps to activate that inner bold that I know you have inside of you to achieve your next chapter, whatever that is. You can find the guide at tamsonfidel.com slash bold or the link in the description down below. And again, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and always feel free to leave questions and or comments down below. I read all of them. Mm -hmm.